What's up, everybody? What's up, y'all? Tristan is clicking the recording I button. I took this the remote. Time, he took I've, the remote. He's doing it. I'm I've trying regained to teach him. my masculine power, oh. and I now have the remote. Oh. <laughs> oh yeah it's funny because nowadays we don't have like we now i use an apple tv remote i don't use like the big remote like we did back in the day that's true and that's when or you, you can use your phone as a remote i do that too my kids have learned that you can get on they can get on their ipad they can screen share to the, to the big tv to the big tv so i'll be rachel i'll be watching something and then all of a sudden it will come up oh, lillian's no. face and she's making funny faces in oh, her perfect. ipad and she's like hijacked oh, her TV, funny. and then oh, they're so really, funny. I thought you were gonna say like Mr. Beast is suddenly playing or something. Oh, or that. Yeah, Titus is showing like... us sharks in monster trucks. I don't know. <laughs> Guys, friend. welcome. Welcome. The tug of war conversation right. between two friends where That's we us. talk about where we are today and but where we want to be. Yeah. And so we've been in a mini series here. That's true. Uh, walking through our church values. Yeah. The first edition of the series was talking about why values matter. Yeah. Like the importance of having some values. There's a difference between a vision. Vision is what you do, but a value is how you do what you do. Right. And years ago, we uh, we spent some time developing them, developing our working values. them out, making them happen. And so, our heart in sharing them is two twofold. One, if you are a leader, uh, leader of a church, leader of a business, leader of your home, values are an essential piece of uh, putting into your whatever it is you're leading, because uh, it's going to be kind of the anchor for how you do what you do. But then also. The other reason is because a lot of our, our people are more church people. And we yeah. want you to know what our values are, kind of let you understand the behind the scenes of it. So either you're a leader and we're helping you maybe figure out how you might create your own values, but or you're a part of our church and now you get to know them really well. That's true. But before we get to that. Okay. I might fall asleep while we're doing this podcast. Oh, I got to just, so. I, I got to just tell everybody I uh, have been on a fast for a while. Yeah. And so broke it today at lunch. Yeah. And so I, for the last three days, only did liquids. And then today we went to a... Uh, rodeo goat. Rodeo he goat. He can't even remember where we went. That's how foggy how, his brain has gotten from yeah. the wonderful food that yeah, he ate. Yeah, and so I ate the most giant burger in the world. And yeah. then a whole plate of fries. Wendy sat, a, not Whitney, Wendy, Wendy sat across, across from me. And she said, Pastor, do you want to share fries with me? I don't want to order a whole set. And I said, no. I don't want to share fries with you. I'm breaking my fast. I'm which, about to eat my own fries. Which is funny because you are a share guy. Yeah, I am. When it comes to food. Rachel, no sharing. No. But trust in you will share. I'll and share. so it's funny because you were, I thought you were joking. No, I, I said because no. Because you were being funny. But nope, you were like, no, I am eating all. And you did. So. I've been waiting for this burger for over 40 days. <laughs> Jeez, in the wilderness. it's important to say that we are pre-recording a bunch of our podcasts. Oh, yeah. Because we have talked about the fast multiple times. And I do not want to trick our listeners into thinking that we are so holy that we have fasted for 150 days oh yeah no no I, it ended it ended today yeah. today is march 4th no, i broke june, bro june. <laughs> this is what i'm saying i don't know what's going to happen because i now have a excessive carbohydrates it's and fried food yeah. That was really Dude, funny. My burger was so good. It was good. What did you get? What was your rodeo goat? I got the bodacious burger the bodacious. minus minus barbecue sauce. Oh. I don't I keep my barbecue from my barbecue. Yeah, I, I'm not a fan and of so that. And so I put some ketchup on my burger. So I it's got a burger. the sugar one and it was so good. They do the sugar bacon. Uh, no, I had sugar bacon. Oh, it's so. You did on yours? Yeah, well, yes. You got to just tell them. Oh, you and just then say. I also. It also had peaches, which is weird, but wonderful. Yeah, I can't. I don't know if I can do the mushy stuff on it. Mine had. Oh, sugar see, bacon your texture yeah sugar bacon uh fried jalapeno no fried onion strings yeah jalapenos some like chipotle something yeah. dude their french fries are kind of burnt but not yeah they are good you're right so i'm just telling you that i already asleep, i'll I, just take over i already talk. feel <laughs> the fogginess happening oh, my in my mind but i think that i'll i think that i'll make it well uh yeah i, th I think you <laughs> one time i did a fast oh no uh, i did a fast and I broke it at midnight, like 12.01. Oh, okay. And I went, Rachel was out of town. It was when Rachel was in Spain. I was going to say, Spain this had to be long, in your 20s. <laughs> yeah, she went to Spain for a long haul. She was gone for five weeks doing her master's. Yeah. And so I go to Fuzzy's. Oh, no. At 12, because who's open at midnight? Yeah, not you know, very when we places. lived up in the condo. Yeah. And so I go and order all, all of the food. And this was like a hardcore water only. Like, oh, my gosh. And it jacked me Yeah, up. you didn't. My you, stomach was like, we don't know what to do with this. We're just going to turn it into a brick inside of your body. And you are going to be in pain for a while. Yeah, it was bad. Oh, no. And so crazy. I've been on ramping a little bit better. So no, good. This, this, 
this burger shall pass properly, I believe. But you might take it. But I may, I may take it. We don't know. Okay, so today, what are we talking about? Uh, you're, you're, you oh, yeah. got the list. Oh, yeah, I don't I'm know. the list lady. Hold on. Okay, here it is. We're doing it in backwards order of how the list goes. And so today's is lead from the front row. Okay, give them a recap of what we've talked we've about. We've already so talked far. about uh, treat everyone like they're your someone. Okay, everybody matters. Treat them like they're your someone. We get to do this. Oh, that was a money episode. That was a great one. I was going to text you later because, you know, I had to run out because I had to go. And I was going to be like, bro, we did a good job. Where did you go? That, that was good. Where were we running to? To my mother in law's birthday. Oh, well, happy dinner. birthday, Jane. Yeah, Jane's birthday. Uh, my uh, my kids were all coming back to the church for a camp meeting, so we got to go eat with uh, the older generation at the time that I think a lot of older generation eats. 4.30. So we went at 4.30. <laughs> Y'all went to Gloria's. Yes. Black bean dip. Yeah. Don't sleep on it. Don't sleep on it. Here's the problem with Gloria's. It's loud. Yeah, they don't. They have a bad, like, uh, echo. Well, and the tables are just all so close yeah. to each other. But they don't have a good, like, sound... Rachel and I, we went on a date there uh -huh. once and we sat outside and it was beautiful. And like, it's the perfect environment. And then right when our food comes, a giant bus pulls up because it's outside oh. and just parks right next to us and is just idling. And the diesel fumes oh, are just word. inundating our table. I thought you were going to say a giant bird came and ate off. <laughs> no, just a bus. <laughs> rum, 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 yeah, rum, gross. Just with diesel fumes. And I, I was still very much on the throne of my life. And so I was just sitting there like, how Ugh. dare they I was come like, Rachel, I'm gonna in talk, my space? I'm going to go talk to this guy. She's <laughs> like, no, you're not. Don't go talk to this guy. But so I was thinking about that. One time Gloria's. we went. Black bean dip, though. It's the good. four of us went to Gloria's with another couple. This is a story. <laughs> this is a story. <laughs> they were newish or something or had been visiting the church or something. They started coming to the church. Yeah, she. Had been married with a pastor. four kids. She had been married to a kid's pastor. Oh, that's right. And she was now dating this guy, a personal trainer, her personal trainer, <laughs> but we don't know this. I don't know. It is, we don't know probably. this until dinner. There's yeah, a new couple show up in the church. The story. They invite us to dinner. Yeah. So he had been her personal trainer. Then they now are dating. Something happened with the marriage. Who knows what uh -huh. it was. Uh -huh. And so then they, <laughs> it's a good story. It's weird because also, I don't know. We sat different. Remember? So she sat in between you and Aaron and yeah, then they sat in it's the like middle. They sat in the middle and then we all sat around them. But but me and Aaron were on either side of her and he was on either side of y'all. Yes. And so all, and we're not crazy people. Like Some I'm little. a, I'm a touchy lady. So like put yeah. your arm here. Whitney's, so like Whitney's, I'll do this Whitney's all the time. too touchy. I don't mean to be. I'm just like, yeah. that is my personality. This is why everyone thinks we're married. No, but that's not true. Yes, it is. No. Yeah. You're touching, no, hugging to me and leaning on me. <laughs> okay, well, God will be speaking to Whitney and worship. She's over there, leaned her head on my shoulder, you crying. <laughs> And I'm like, not okay. that. Okay. So <laughs> meaning though, like I'm not overly sensitive to that because that's how I am. Whatever. It's You're no big cool deal. With it. I'm cool with touching. I am not a toucher. You are, you are like, yeah. When we were first friends, I'm an only child. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> Don't Get touch out of me. my personal space. And so, but this lady uh -huh. all throughout the dinner is like, but it's like this. It's no, like she is rubbing and caressing, caressing you and Aaron. And Aaron. He, yeah, both of you. She was not a, uh, what is she? No respect or a person. No, she's it got her hand on my neck. Yeah, at one point. Like, like jawline so rubbing. It was strange. Like, and I'm like. Oh, and she's licking her fingers. Well, I was getting me. there. Oh. So then she orders quail. Okay. Remember the little birds? Uh -huh. And then she tells us a story I about, because Rachel likes quail too. So Rachel's like, I will eat quail. You know, I'll eat interesting foods. And then she's like, well, yeah, you know, when I was going through a hard time recently in my divorce, I hit a squirrel on the way home and I picked it up and threw it in the back of my car what? and took it home. You don't remember uh -uh. this? Oh my God. And she's telling us, I took it home and cooked it. And Rachel and I are like, uh what is happening <laughs> right now? And so then she gets her quail and she starts I'm not doing it, but like seductively licking. I can't even eating do the bones of the quail. This would be like my worst moment that Julia could take a screenshot and put it on. Like, Ooh, <laughs> oh, yeah, put it out here like you've done to poor Tristan. I just realized his picture is still there. Yeah. Uh, and she's licking them all seductively like at y'all. Yeah, and Rachel weird. and I are just like, all right, all right, we're done. What is happening? This is enough. Well, this is as we're finding out that she's left her husband, her four children, and is dating Muscle Boy across yeah. the table, who can't string three sentences no, together. No, no. Let's just get he it clear. He just looked nice to he, her, This I guess. guy says no words. No, he didn't talk meal. the whole, oh, my word. But and his biceps were hanging out his shirt. 
<laughs> he was wearing a medium. <laughs> yeah, he had a medium on. <laughs> and so I just remember we got in the car because like we all four rode there together. We get in the car and we're all just like, oh my gosh, <laughs> what just happened? We have a lot of stories like that, but that was one of the most memorable at Glorious. It We've just, been telling some good stories. It just made me think lately. of an inappropriate one. Can I tell an inappropriate one? It's about Aaron. I don't know. We what were interviewing. We were interviewing this couple, and oh, they yeah, that's they, fine. they flew that in. They flew in from somewhere, <laughs> and we're all in Witt's car. And so me and Aaron in the front, and then I don't remember them. They're in the middle, and then Rachel and I are in the are way in the, back in the third row, which you can't hear hardly anything in the way back. And so, so that's why. So we get into downtown Fort Worth, <laughs> oh and we're going, we're going to some restaurant, and this woman walks across the crosswalk. Yes. And Aaron says, <laughs> look at the butt on that lady. <laughs> and, and I, I look. And, you and look. first of all, it was like a geometrical phenomenon. It probably, she had probably had surgery. Don't she probably think? had four surgeries. Oh, okay. Like, like what was happening, implants. what was happening did not make sense without suspenders. <laughs> And so it was so like Julia's face is like what? It was visually jarring what we were looking at. Yes. This lady walk across the street, but these people we literally Just met met them eight minutes ago. <laughs> I hear Aaron say, "Look at the butt on this lady," and the whole rest of the dinner. Was fine. Was fine. We, but it was just, we hired them. They came yeah, and worked yeah, here. But they how, said yes. Yeah, but but trying to reel that in. Yeah, it was a little bit like, was really oh, funny. sorry. And Rachel and I are on the way back, so we don't even know what happened. We're like, what are y'all saying up there? <laughs> and then y'all are just giggling the way you do. And it was, oh, my word. Yeah, that, things like that happen. And we took them to a restaurant that we had never been to before that ended up being, you know, when you go to a restaurant and they don't have the prices on the menu. You should get up and leave. <laughs> we did not yet know this in our like immaturity. immaturity. And so that was a bad. That was not a great. And we were like, this is not the precedent for how we treat our staff. We do not normally come to this expensive restaurant. But the restaurant, restaurant was like literally next yeah. door to a Grimaldi's. Yeah, it was not. It was not. It was not. Like next door was $18 right. it was large not pieces. Super, right. It was not super uh, fancy, but it was just expensive. Okay. All right. So, so first leading two. Leading from the front row. Leading from the front row. <laughs> so you and Aaron were in the front row. <laughs> and we yelling were leading, not, and not we, to the right place. I'm just kidding. Okay, here's why it's a value. Is because uh, a lot of times, hmm. people in leadership, if they're not on the stage, their natural tendency is to stand in the back. Our natural tendency can be to be in the back and observe and critique. Or in the lobby. Or in the lobby. Or in the green room. You're in the green room. And in pastor circles right. that we've been associated with, it grossed us out. Yeah. How many times that like the people in charge weren't on the front row. Right. The people that were leading the thing were, yeah, in the green room doing nothing. Right. Out in the lobby trying to network and hustle right. some deal instead of like being there and worshiping and engaging and amening. And that's in the spiritual context. Right. But leading from the front row is more than just in a service. Right. It means... Uh, very like to us, the reason we said that I remember was the, like, if we're going to go and be a part of something, if we're going to show up somewhere, if we're going to show up to somebody else's ministry or one of our team's department mm -hmm. meetings, whatever, we're going to be supporters of it. We're going to be cheerleaders of it. Therefore, we're going to go to the front and we're going to help show the rest of the room how you should respond, this how is, you should be. This is a church value. Yeah. Or it's not a staff value. No, it's a church value. Um, because that's the who, that's who we are as church, yeah. as people. So that, that doesn't mean I don't go to one of Tim's kids' worker meetings right. and stand in the back with my arm crossed looking around. Right. If I'm there at the meeting, I'm going to be in the front row. Right. I'm going to be... Shaking now, hands. Now, I might not actually be in the, in the front row, right. I was gonna say, I'm, I a, am engaged. It is I'm a, a figure, part of what's happening. What is it called? Figurative? Figure, figure of speech. Figure of speech. But yeah, I'm like... When we go to other churches or other conferences, other events, we are like front row people. Like maybe not the front row, but like we sit towards the front. But yeah, it means we're being engaged in it. We're adding value. Mm -hmm. People who sit in the front 
are people who add value. If you're in a classroom setting, you're most likely one of the students who are going to lift your hand and answer the teacher's question. Yeah. If you are in a church service and you're going to be someone, if you're leading for, if you're in the front, then you're the one helping set the tone and atmosphere for how the worship is going or for the amens from the crowd. And so like, it just means you're adding value. You're going to contribute, not sit in the back and critique or, or criticize. Or wait till it's your moment. Right. Right. No, it's so true. I think we had seen so many people with the attitude of, I could do this better. I could, uh, yeah, we wouldn't do it that way. All kinds of like negative things. It was like, no, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if how you're going to do it is the way I would do it. I'm going to be a champion of you. And that yeah. translates so many places. Like when I first was helping like leading on staff, we had a very small team. And so like, I really helped a ton with like the assimilation and the volunteer like culture of our church. But then as we continued to grow and as I kept doing what I was doing, I had to hand that off to somebody else. As I handing that off, they're gonna do it different than me because they're not me. But I had to decide, I could have sat there and been like, that's not how I would have done it. Yeah. But that's not it. I'm gonna be leading from the front row. I'm gonna be cheering you on. I'm gonna be willing to help. I'm gonna give you my wisdom. And then I'm gonna say, oh my word, you're doing it better than me. That's that's what it looks like yeah. to lead from the front. I remember, it, it just came up my time hopper. We were just talking about when we went to Africa. Uh huh. Yeah. Was that this time of year, a couple yeah, years ago? Yeah, it was this week, like two years ago. So we think? went, uh, Three years ago, Rachel and I and Aaron went, went on a missions trip to Durban, South, South Africa. Africa. Yeah. And they were putting on a pastor's conference. Mm -hmm. And so for all of these urban areas of Africa, you know, you say African people think of just like huts, huts. but there's like booming cities, yeah. giant businesses lots and of wells beautiful like and yeah, so there's people that are planting churches in these urban environments and so they call them urban tribes right yeah. it's this organization that brought us in to come and teach at their pastor's conference yeah, to yeah. teach guys and women how to plant churches mm -hmm. and so we went to this and there's a few other pastors that they yeah. invited and there was a moment um in one of the evening services that they invited a guy to come and teach everybody a dance yes and it was like um, the African cha-cha slide. Correct. It was so like one that for their it wasn't culture, like Zulu, everybody knew it. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't Zulu religious dance or something. It was just like a fun. It was like a viral. Remember our one that was like a dance style. Oh, yeah. It was like their viral dance. And so they have this guy on stage who's like dressed for the nines. Like, yeah. I don't even know what that saying means, but he's dressed really nice and they have all their pastors and they want all of us to come up yeah. and to be a part of learning this dance. And we were the only American pastors mm -hmm. that went up and were part of the dance. Yeah. Everybody else stood back. back of the room, back of the room, cameras out. Oh, for sure. Wouldn't engage. And I remember that being one of those moments in my head being like, we're leading from the front. Yeah. Because us being down there laughing and learning this dance, embarrassing ourselves right. with all of these other African pastors. We know, though, that I'm a great dancer. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Somebody posted a video this week of Donald Trump doing a dance. And it's the worst, like, it's the worst dance you've ever seen. And I shared it with Whitney and I said, look, he stole your dance moves. <laughs> It was pretty bad because it did look exactly <laughs> like me. <laughs> but the four of us were up dancing, making a fool of ourselves. Yeah. Not because we wanted to. No, right. Not because we weren't exhausted of preaching 100 times in three days. Right. But because to these pastors that were there that we were trying to connect with, we knew that they needed to see us as just regular people too. Right. Yeah. Not as the elite of God. Right. And so we put ourselves into a kind of embarrassing and inconvenient moment yeah. for them. Absolutely. And I think that's what leading from the front is, is putting your feelings to the side yeah. and saying like, what's better for the group? What's right. better for all of these people that are around me? Is it better for me to sit back and be insecure? Right. Or is it better for me to just jump in and, and be a part? No, it's so good. I think that uh, as leaders, you know, we have a lot of ideas. We have a yeah. lot of vision for how things could be. We have a lot of opinions and we can easily become critical uh, of any type of environment we're in. So take the dancing, for example. We could have easily been like, This is dumb. This is weird. They should pray more. They should do something more holy than me. <laughs> this is strange. Wow, this is a secular dance. We could have yeah. had all kind of criticism. There's a lot of hip shaking happening in here. <laughs> You're 
<laughs> right. 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 But look at the butt on that person. <laughs> but instead, we chose to be like, I'm going to be engaged in this and a part of it. Here's the thing: even if I don't always think something is wonderful and like the greatest thing they can do if i'm not engaged in it i'm not going to be able to affect change in it anyway yeah and so i think so often we like sit back and critique rah, 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 but we're not helping solve the problem anyway even whether it's good or bad you know and being able to say hey we're going to lead from the front for our our staff team uh we went to a conference not long ago we've shared about it where you and i were supposed to be like leading and speaking and it got taken from us at the last minute for a silly no real reason and all of our team was kind of hurt all of our yeah. team was kind of like confused we were obviously hurt and confused but we like had a meeting with our team and we told them guys we're gonna still be here we're gonna still give it our all and we're still gonna sit in the front row we're still gonna cheer we're yeah. still gonna applaud we're still gonna be who we are because just because our feelings got hurt we're not gonna let that steal from the moment that all these other people are gonna have or steal from our value absolutely this is how we do what we do even when we don't feel like it right it's a value it's a value and so it's like it it's is it's not an emotion no, literally. Right. And I remember like, even after it happened, we were sitting in the car, just the four of us, like kind of jarred from it. Like, whoa, did we just have that meeting that we just had weird. But we, in that moment, like the four of us were like, this is what we're doing. Right. We're sticking around and we're going to be who we are because this is who we are. Yeah. And if we don't hold the value of who we are, even in a hard moment, then it's not really who we are. Mm -hmm. And I think so often leading from the front, front is an easy thing to do when you're happy, when you're having a good day, hmm. when you feel, even when you feel better than the other people, then it's yeah. easy for you to go to the front. And even if you think their dance is silly or whatever, but when you're having a hard day and when you don't really want to be there, and it's even especially, even and especially if you're offended or hurt, hmm. leading from the front is a value that you have to determine, am I going to still hold that? Am I going to still be that? And for me, that was a moment uh, that I look back on and I'm like, I'm really proud of us. I'm yeah. really proud that we held the value of who we are. And like, no matter that story and how it all worked out and shook out and all the things, what I remember most of it is how proud I was of the team we had and how they all followed with us and we were all in the front and we were all giving value to the moment and we were all continuing to be exactly who we are. Hmm. That's really good. It's good, right? <laughs> Why do you stand in the back? Yeah. And where? Hmm. Like where in your life do you That's find good. yourself retracting and why not That's leading, great. not being a part. And I watch it in people's lives spiritually so much. Yeah, I'll see men come in that I know own a business, lead a hundred employees, right? Are a go getter driver. Yep. But then they sit on the 10th row arms down during worship. Mm hmm don't volunteer, don't give, don't serve, don't engage. And they're, they're passive, mm -hmm. but you're not passive. Not as, as a human, right? But here in God's presence, yeah. you feel inadequate. I think that's a theology issue that you don't believe that you're actually a son of God. Hmm, and so right. you're not really welcomed in his house. Right. But there's reasons that we all retract. Yeah. And if you're retracting the value for me, we lead from the front. It also gives me confidence yeah. To get in the front. Yeah, it's good. Right. That says, it doesn't matter if I belong in the front or not. Right. I'm going to go be in the front. My feelings tell me I don't. My feelings tell me I'm not good enough, not smart enough, too small, don't belong, right. can't. But I'm going to remember, know that I, that I am. You're going to have to help me. Okay. I remember when we were writing this value, we were talking about it. We used an illustration and talked about if there was like a car burning in the parking lot. And we kept talking about Billy Lovell. Oh, yeah. I don't remember it all. But we were talking about how if there was a car on fire in the parking lot, yeah. the, the Billy Lovells and the men in our church that would run out. Right. Not They're not firefighter. They don't have permission right. of this person to come and help them. But they would run out, kick the window in, pull the person out of the yeah. burning car. We were talking about like that assertive personality yeah. versus the people that stand back and watch Right. And debate and question what's happening. Well, because for us, we we defined it. And I kind of think that's why we ended up putting it in the church value versus the staff is that if you're a leader, you will be in the front. Mm -hmm. So those who are watching the fire 
on fire of the car. They're just watching. You're not really a leader. You might want the title of a leader. You might stand around thinking you're a leader. But if when push comes to shove, you're not willing to jump in, then are you actually a leader? And so for us, it was more to the value than just we lead from the front. It's do you want to lead? then you better get in the front. You right. know, it's like a definition of this is how we lead. And if you're not willing to do that, then you probably shouldn't lead. Rachel and I were just talking about some people um, that have left the church the other day. Rachel was processing some of her feelings with it with yeah. me. And we talked about how back at Matlock, these were front row people. Yeah. But then over time, they turned into third row mm -hmm. and fifth row. Right. And then... Back at the end, it turned yeah. into we had our ushers that would block off the back three rows right. until the room was full and they would open right. them. But this, the wife would duck under the rope yeah. and sit on the back row closest to the door. And you know what happened after they did that for six months? They left the church. Right. But, but it was this gradual, like, but they also backstepping. Went, they also went from leaders to criticizers. Yes. They also went from influential to infectious. Like they they Dude, that's a podcast right there. Yeah. They they were people who had at one time been massively like you said their name, everybody knew who they were. Right. To people that then the only people who knew they, who they were were people who also were negative and critical. And right. like that is I think the danger of not understanding you got to be in the front because being in the front also keeps you accountable. Yeah. It also means you can't yeah, hide. I only got kicked off the bus when I was riding in the back seat. Right. Right. Yeah. The reason you ride in the back is either because you're doing something hanky janky with your girlfriend or boyfriend, right? Yeah. Or you're causing trouble and causing a fight. Like these exactly. are the reasons. But when you're hanky janky hanky janky, I don't know. It's like <laughs> say it, but make it holy. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but like if, if you're sitting in the front, you're accountable, you're exposed, you're, you're open required to lead and you're open to critique. You're open to evaluation. You're open to, Hey, I'm here. You see me. So keep me in check. Yeah. And that is something I think people don't like, but as a leader, get up there, be in the front. Let's talk about another angle. Okay. Let's do it. We lead from the front, uh, means that we're willing to jump in and get our hands dirty too. For sure. Um, Years ago, we had a guy on our staff and uh, we took a truck and a trailer to one of our storage units and we had a pallet full of stuff that we had to get up on this trailer. Yeah. And so I say to the guys that are there, I'm like, okay, everybody grab a corner, pick it up. And this guy just stood there unable to like find a spot around this pallet yeah. to grab it. Yeah. And it was a red flag Yeah. that I realized like, oh, this guy he doesn't know how he doesn't right. know how to jump into the fire and, and to get his hands dirty. Yeah. And so for us, part of our culture is that everybody's willing to do every job. Yeah. When we were at the pig doing seven tear down. Yeah. Everybody was sweaty on the end of the day. Right. There was nobody that was exempt from putting crap in the trunk mm -hmm. of their car and bringing it. Right. You're, oh, you're taking this stuff and charging at your house? Okay, cool. Okay, you're driving this truck. You're first in. You're last out. You're picking up tacos. You're, and there was no job that was too little. Right. And I remember multiple Sundays, me and Aaron being out there helping. Yeah. Tear down the gym yeah. for the kids. Aaron sticking and helping crank the speakers down for the thing. Yeah. Me going and getting stage pieces loaded right. up on because that's our mentality is yeah. like, if you're a servant of God, right. You should be willing to serve when the serving is needed. Mm -hmm. Not, not that we're living at this elite. Now, come on. I understand that there's a point that you can't do everything. Oh, right. And like, I didn't, I didn't do setup hardly ever. Right. Because I needed you my brain and body to, to be fresh, yeah. to be able to yeah. preach the multiple services. Yeah. But by the time teardown was there, why can't I stick around and right put on some different shoes and go load some crap. Yeah, there's that phrase people say all the time, if you're too big to serve, you're too small to lead. But yeah. this is like a different a different level, like a, t a totally different step. It's not just about serving, it's about jumping in to whatever the situation is. Yeah. And I think that's the, that's the piece that like, for us, we 
we just were like, hey, we had both seen and been a part of cultures where, yeah, the higher you went on the totem pole, the less you were willing to step into the mess, step yeah. into the muck, step into the whatever. And we were like, no, it doesn't matter how big we get. It doesn't matter how fancy we are. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter how cool we think we are and it doesn't matter how high up on the ladder our title gets we're going to always be people that are willing to jump in the front and jump into whatever needs to be done mm -hmm. and if we're unwilling to do that the thing about leading is we what do we say all the time what walks in us runs in the people who are following us so whatever we're doing they're going to do even more and so if we're teaching that i'm too big i'm not able to i'm mm -hmm. not going to jump into it whatever then they're not going to either yeah. and eventually like it causes a culture shift. Yeah. And so I think for us also, this value holds culture really strong. Yeah. It sounds like a party starter, get up in the front, be loud and silly, but no, no, it, no. but it's an anchor value that keeps us in the culture that we really fight hard to keep yeah. of who we are, that no matter who we are, no matter what happens, no matter what God does or what platform we stand on, we will always be the people we've always been willing to jump in and help at a moment's notice. Yeah. I what? think of all these movies, you know, all the like war, famous war movies. Mm -hmm. And there's two kinds of leaders in every war movie. There's the William Wallace. Yeah. Sword in hand, front row. Right. Charging into battle. Yeah. And then there's the like Weasley guy. Yeah. Who's in the back on his horse. Right. Telling people what to do and not caring that the soldiers are getting killed. Right. And he's just still sending them in. There's those two kind of mentalities yeah. of leaders. And I think that we just have to choose which one we are. Yeah. Now, there's some things that I stand in the back and I direct. Right. Meaning like in my leadership, it's not all trust and has his hands on it. But, but I think that for our culture, for our church, we're front row. Right. If there's a problem, I'm going to camp. I am personally going to kids youth camp and youth camp. And you know what I'm going to be doing? Anything that's needed there. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not just in my cabin, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like driving around my golf cart smiling. Yeah. Like when stuff goes wrong, I'm uh, last year the power went out. Yeah. So we had to solve it. We're solving it. <laughs> right. There, there's a hundred things. All the, I ran to all the cabins and got the microwaves. You went and got all the popcorn. We yeah. like brought them in. It, it's a it's a posture. It's a mentality that is super, su yeah, super defining is what you're saying of the type of leader that you are. Because as you're saying that, I'm like, right, but every movie that you watch, which one actually made a huge difference? Oh no, the, well, the ones where the guy goes in the front and fights, they win. Right. The guy where the leader stays in the back and right. just directs, he eventually retreats because his army lost. Right. Because all those people get killed. Yeah. And, and we see that on the big screen, but we don't apply it to our everyday life. Right, right. Yeah. That's, that's like, I can't tell my kids to clean their rooms if mine's not clean. Yeah. I have to lead from the front. No, that's really I can't weird. tell my wife to be nice if I'm rude. If you're rude, right. I have to lead from the front. It's really lead by example is what we could have called the value. For sure. But I think that it, it has so many facets of it that... It's not just leading where you are the leader. That's the other piece to it. Yes. It's being a leader wherever you are. Yeah. And I think that's, I mean, you and I have the personality that whatever room we walk into, we're just natural born. We are we're yeah, natural born leaders. We're natural. Yeah. Talkers, uh, atmosphere shifter. That's who we are. But that's not, again, this is not a personality value. This is a decision of I'm going to go be a leader wherever I am. I'm going to help. I'm going to add value. I'm going to be I'm going to be a, a champion of wherever I'm going, not someone against it. I think that's yeah. a huge piece that that when we're honest, when we're really honest, when we go somewhere, especially a place that even we're more impressed by than where we are, we can quickly become people that don't champion it, but we want that's who we want to always be. Mm -hmm. And so I think it was such an important again, anchor to hold of saying, yeah, our personality is this, but it's not about that. It's, it doesn't matter what your personality is. You're going to lead from the front. We're going to be people who are in the front cheering everybody else on. Yeah. Yeah. What yeah. else? What? You're thinking something. No, it's one of those values that doesn't get a whole lot of play. Mm -mm, right. But it's such a big part 
of what we hold as valuable. Right. We've, we interviewed a guy and we brought him and his wife in to interview them to come on our staff team. And just through the conversations, it became pretty evident that at the church that they were at, there was this elitist yeah. hierarchy of right. staff. Yeah. And some of the questions they were asking felt a little bit like, well, when you hire us, what level of eliteness are we going to be on? And what will we, we, what will we be required to do? And it grossed, it was like, no, yeah, you're not it. Because there's not an elite level that any of us should view ourselves in, in the kingdom of God. Now, does it make more sense for me to, on a Sunday, be focused on what I'm preaching than to be a greeter? Yes, it makes more right. sense for me to do that. Right. But, um, but when we do volunteer appreciation, I'm at the front door greeting every single person that comes. Right. 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 And and so it's just really having an honest view of yourself, like, how am I doing leading from the front or am I just waiting to be demanded? I have to sit up here. Mm, yeah. Yeah. No, I think so. I think another thing, I guess another reason for me that I think of it so like strongly is that when we took over, like leading the church, all the things, it became a point of conversation um, at, at me, what's the word? Like to me, uh, so, from some other leaders in the church that were like, now you need to understand your days. Cause, cause when I wasn't like on staff, I was second row, not front row, you know, whatever. Yeah. But they, they were like, you need to understand you're not going to be sitting up front anymore. Now you're going to be in the back doing work. Now you're going to be back here. And it was like, hold on, wait a minute. Oh, right. Wait a minute. What are we actually doing back there? Back there. Are we evaluating why, why you said it before, like, where are you in, in the back and why? And we had to really evaluate why, why are you back here? You, you could fill every Sunday with a problem to solve in the lobby. Absolutely. So could Tim, so could Enrique. Absolutely. So could everybody else on our staff. But is that the moment? Right. Or is it better to be in the front? leading worship, leading in the sermon, right. leading the house than it is dealing with one little problem. And I think that sometimes we jump on handling these little problems because we're more confident yeah, and we feel like we're doing something than we do submitted on the front row. That's what it is. Because we think we're we look more important, like we're solving big things. Run around, with chicken run with around head cut off. in the back. Right. We look, and we're all we are is yeah, a submitted person on yeah. the front row. I'm not leading anything. Is what it what it looks like. It looks like I'm just an observer, but understanding no, as a leader, being in the place that is the most important moment happening, which is the most important ha moment happening. Somebody who can't figure out how to register for something right this minute, but actually this one, this whole church service is happening right now. We can figure this out afterward. Yeah. You know what? Actually the info team is here after service. I'd love to help you. Yeah. But, but I am, am I, am I trying to be more important than the moment? Yeah. And I think that that's why some people stay in the back because I'm trying to be bigger than what's actually happening in the room. We're about to have a culture shift. Why? What just happened? In my head. Oh, we, we, have this value that we talk about, we lead from the front, but I think that we've got, and this podcast is one of the reasons we're doing it, yeah. is to get it out to the church to create that culture mm -hmm. in a stronger way. Um, I went, Rachel and I were in Seattle, this is years ago, and who's the big fancy pastor in Judas Seattle? Smith, yeah. We went to Judas Church, and they had the first three rows of the whole church reserved for their pastors, key leaders to sit in. Mm -hmm. And then it was like, battle royale to get in row four or five. Yeah. We went to Hillsong, New York, which don't throw shade. You don't even know the whole story. Right. And the energy in the front of that room, but yeah. sometimes for us, right. Especially in Mansfield. Yeah. Filling those front rows with people that wanted to be there was a challenge. Absolutely. Because we have this culture of, I would rather be safe in the fifth row 
because I can get up and leave mm-hmm. or I don't, I'm not going to get called out or, or whatever. And what I'm saying as we're talking about this, yeah. my hope is, and the, the objective we're going to work on is shifting the culture that the front row mm-hmm. is the back row. Right. That the front row is the cool spot to be, that the mm-hmm. front row is what we are um, wanting to be a part of, mm-hmm. that we would rather fill from the front without being told. Yeah. And uh, my brain just started going like, how do we how do we readjust that culture? Yeah. So that we're not having to get ushers to shovel people into the front. No, you're right. Instead of them more naturally wanting to sit in the back on an outside seat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it, it, it's, it's what we're, why we're doing this whole series is realizing some of the, you said it before, this value is so innateness. It's so... Well, since I was a kid. Yeah, it's so, it's so, yeah, part of who we are as humans that then we forget to then communicate it and get get it to the people around us. And yeah. so the reason why we've even been like, oh, we've got to get these values back out again is because we realize as new people are here and they don't they don't know that that's a value. They don't we haven't said it in a right. long time. We've taken it for granted yeah. that that's who we are and that's who our staff team is, but we have to help the rest of the people yeah. know that that's what they got to do. What There's, your brain I can see is no, like No, we did a, we did a thing a while ago here that we just called a reset and oh, I'm yeah. thinking about our next like oh, leadership reset yeah. that we've just got to, we've just got to push some of these. So if you are a more church uh, person, if you're part of the more team, yeah, fill from the front, man, right? be in the, be in the front row, hands up, amen in your mouth, clapping yeah. on time, lead from the front. Yeah. And, and I think then the question, ask yourself, why, why are you in the back? Why are you in the back? Is it so you can, or why am I in the middle? Oh yeah. Why no, am I that's not? That's really good. No, it's right. It doesn't even have to be. I'm doing back. good. I'm doing good. Right. Why are you just comfortable staying where you are? Yeah. But but is it is it a spirit of critique? Is it a I feel important if I can do this? Is it a comfort thing? Like if you you can't change it if you don't evaluate why you're doing what you're doing. And right. So you've got to ask yourself that question. Yeah. Uh, I, I feel the French fries hitting me. Is that what's ha- that's part of what's happening to you? Uh-huh. Do you see it? Do you see me like? Yeah, because I'm, I'm some powering. of this. I'm like, this is good what we're saying, and you're just kind of like, yeah. No, good. I'm powering. I'm powering no, down. No, don't my power body, down. My body is working to digest all of those French fries, <laughs> and so, so I'm like, I can feel it. I well, can feel it. Well, what else? I'm out of. I'm out of. I'm out. You're out of juice. So if you're out of juice, that's that doesn't good. mean we have to hang up the call. I'm trying to lead from the front. <laughs> I just I'm out of good ideas. <laughs> you're out of good. ideas. What else is that? Did we? Did we? Did we squeeze no, the orange? I just, no, I just think the part that we have not, that's, again, I keep going back to it because I feel like we haven't dive, do, dove dove into it as much because it's not a culture we have anymore. But I think for people in their homes, in their businesses, it's a really important piece to go, okay, why am I back here? What am I doing? When, when you walk into the boardroom and you're not the one giving the presentation, are you a champion of the person giving the presentation or are you hoping they screw up so you mm, look better? Right. Are you uh, giving, you know, if you're going to family Thanksgiving, right, and your sister's got a great story to tell, are you just waiting for the minute that you can jump in and tell your story or are you leading by example, leading from the front and being like, that's an incredible story. I'm so proud of you. Oh my gosh, what's happened? Like, I just think that is the piece of this value that, we do hold really well and we yeah. do keep really well. And so, but if you, but if you're not, then you've got to pay attention to that because it's a, it's one of those things that slips just one degree and one degree yeah. and one degree. And then pretty soon you realize it's what happened to that person mm-hmm. that you're talking about started in the front. Oh, now I'm just sitting on the fourth row. It's not yeah. a big deal, but it just starts to drift and yeah. it just starts to drift. And then pretty soon you've left something you were actually called to lead. Yeah. But instead, now you don't, you're not even there anymore. And so, yeah. what? I saw one of the most beautiful examples of leading from the front row. I went to a friend's church in Albuquerque, when, over the summer or over yeah. last year? Yeah. And uh, he didn't even know I was showing up. And so I just yeah. showed up on a Sunday. And at this church, his dad was the pastor before him for yeah. years. Years. Him, his, his mom and dad were pastors of this church, and then they kind of stepped back into a different role, and then he stepped in as the lead pastor. And when I went, I just wanted to go and see what the church was like. Yeah. And you know where his dad sat and his mom? Front, front row. row. And they sat there with the front row with big um, 
uh, like Journal leather binders. binders with a big yellow pad in it. And while he's preaching, his dad was furiously taking notes mm -hmm. with a pen taking notes. Right. And I thought that's the most beautiful thing that I've ever seen yeah. because this man who's preached 5,000 more sermons than my friend. Yeah. This dad has preached some so of the greatest times, stuff. Right. Incredible leader. Wrote books, built an amazing church. Things, right. Author. World renowned guy. Right. Is sitting here under his son. Submitted. Taking notes. Right. On stuff he probably is smarter than. Yeah. But do you know why he's on the front row taking notes? Yeah. Because what he's doing is he's lending his power. His influence, his leadership. To his son. Yeah. And he's telling all the old heads in the room. Right. Hey, all y'all that have been with me since 1986. We're, be, we're be, following this we're, guy. I'm with him. Yeah. So if you respect me at all, follow him. That. And he's standing there. And I remember watching, getting emotional. Yeah. Praying, saying, God, when I'm 70. Yeah. Let me have that let heart. Let me still have that heart. Yeah. Let me be that guy. Yeah. Instead of the guy that's mad that I'm not young and I can't do it and I'm not cool anymore and whatever, let me be the guy not on my laptop taking notes because yeah. what's he doing? Right. Because you can't tell on an iPad if you're even taking notes. Right. And this guy has all the tech. He's a smart guy. Right. But he's up there intentionally. Pen, legal pad, and the dude mm -hmm. is furiously writing. He's drawn shapes that are on the LED wall. Front row. And it made me like so impressed with him but more than any book he's read, written. Right. More than any sermon right. I've ever heard this guy but preach. But that's the thing. Th just watching him in the front row yeah. was like, that's that's what I want to be. Right. And so... It's super good. But am I that now? No, you have to ask yourself. Like, Am I that... We're about to have... I can say it. Over the summer, we're going to have Brady preach. Brady's one of our youth pastors, and she runs a bunch of stuff yeah. around here. Brady's going to preach on a Sunday. Yeah. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to amen her. Yes. And I'm going to support her. I'm going to lend. Meet with her ahead of time. I'm going to meet with her. And you're going to give her your ideas. I'm going like, to give her the best that I got. Right. I'm right. not going to hold anything back. Right. This week you preached. I gave yeah. you the best that I had yeah. to help you win. Right. That's what you do for me. Right. Whitney will amen stuff she told me to say in my office and pretend like I made it up. Yeah. That's, but but that's, that's what it is. But that's our culture. That's what it is. And that's, no, that's I, how you No, it made me start front. thinking about the very beginning when you... Uh, started leading and and again this is not like oh good job Whitney but we wanted a culture a shout back culture we yeah. wanted an amen culture and like I didn't know what I was doing I didn't know how to do it right and all the things and probably overdid it because that's my personality but I would sit on the front row and say yes right amen that's good all the time because we had a silent dead culture in that season yeah and we were trying so hard to build it and i remember this other guy on the team at the time one day i looked over and i saw him making tally marks and i was like what is he doing and then i realized oh he's tally marking how many times i say amen or yeah. that's good or Sh whatever yeah and and so, so that he can so that joke he about and it another in guy private could mock me later which whatever to each their own but I they gone. Yeah, I went to him. And I went to him because I was like, I have to. And I said, Hey, what, what, what's that about? Why are you doing that? What's and you know, he was caught look, look like Ada Canary. And he admitted, I'm sorry, this is what it was. You're right. I was making fun of you. I shouldn't have done that. But and I remember telling him in that moment, Hey, bro, we're on the same team. Yeah. All I want is for you to do that with me. Yeah. All I want is for you to sit with me and build this culture. Right. And we can work together. Yeah. But because he couldn't get over his intimidation or his whatever, his own self, uh, he couldn't do that. And I think that that's the piece of leading from the front that is just so important. When I when I see people that I, I have like a whole list of names in my head that I'm thinking of, and that's why I keep kind of pushing back to it because I'm like they missed it. They missed out right. on getting to be a part of it mm -hmm. because maybe they weren't the first one who created it or the yeah. first one whose idea it was or the one on the stage. And I'm like, dude, the only reason I get to be where, where I am is because I'm willing to submit and sit and go, yeah, let's cheer for everybody else. The only reason Brady is going to preach this summer is because she's literally the champion of all the people. Like, we, we have to be willing to join the team, submit, be on the front. Otherwise, we're going to just miss it. Right. That's all. I just keep thinking about it. I keep being mm -hmm. sad in my head for the people who've missed it because they let that, like, 
insecure, critical, something spirits eep in. And instead of ripping it out and joining the team, they just like slipped back, slipped back, slipped back. Yeah, I don't think that we have a value. We probably need to add one or adjust one or something that's about competition. Yeah. Like something we say a whole bunch is yeah. that we don't have a competitive culture. Yeah. But like this, this, this value is, this is leads what it leads us to leads into that because we've had people that have came on the staff. I hired a guy that I was friends with in college that I wanted to come on as an executive level pastor. Yeah. But he couldn't stop being in competition with Whitney. Yeah. Right. And it was like, no, oh, dude, we're you're just not on the same team. Let's just yeah, work together. Like, you're not in. This is not like who's Trustin's best friend club. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> this is this yeah. like this is not what it is but he was i think kind of obsessed with that con competitiveness yeah. but then also wanted to be the lead pastor yeah well i think being a leader the reason why it's so important yeah it's like just just freaking lead right quit being so obsessed with these goofy mind games that are in your own head right just lead yeah, the the trick of it is when you're a leader, you you do have a certain personality, a certain alpha whateverness to you that if it's not kept in check, can lead to this comp competition and uh -huh. confusion and chaos. And what instead this this says is like we're building a church of leaders. Yeah, like the people in our church are not just Joe Schmoes; they no. are leader right. people. And no matter who they are and what they do, and no matter what their nine to five is and how fancy and awesome that it whatever we're going to continue to always be people that sit in the front cheer each other on and and lead it lead the dang thing is what you said now because because the, the truth of the matter is that guy got so obsessed with all of those things he never led nothing it's so good yeah it's one of those ideas that we really have to understand no and i'm excited as you said like to start putting that back out and really be a value that we keep talking about and really helping people understand yeah. in our church and in our organization, I yeah. think it's so good. All right, guys, it's so good. I think that those French fries are finally taking over. I either need to go for a jog or take a nap. Which one are you gonna do? I might eat some ice cream on the way home. <laughs> I don't I don't all the way know. I hope that this fast into breaking the fast doesn't turn into diet death spiral for me. No, it won't, it won't. Pray, you know why? Pray for your boy. You know why? Because you lead from the front, so you got all the accountability around you, so it won't, so that's why. See? See what she did See there? See what I did there? Guys, if you Love ever have any questions, comments, hit us up. Hope you're doing well. Keep talking and more. That's right. See ya.